So this is going to be a little bit of a project for relief in Ukraine. Um, this is what people think of typically when they look at a load-bearing vest uh, for combat. Um, tourniquet is over here, and here is a first aid kit, okay? Um, in combat, you can certainly have different bandages like this, um, all this put out, and this is typically what a medic um, would have like I would. Um, a lot of people think of different um, packs like this, which for the general person is too much, right? This is not going to be carried by most people. They can't carry it in, and move in combat, reserved really for medics. Um, medics also will use stuff like this uh, with medications and drugs, and this is not going to help a lot of people. Um, and what we want to do is concentrate on what actually will help people. So stay tuned and we're gonna show you how to build a kit that pretty much can help anyone and everyone who is fighting the Russians in Ukraine right now. In order to be functional, and universal, we need to reduce a number of items into something that is very small and compact. Um, you can go with something that's commercially available like this. Uh, it's a pouch, but the problem is in Ukraine, it rains and you will need to get it compact and you will need to get it um, where it is watertight. So I personally like creating med kits that we're going to distribute in a vacuum sealed bag, not just a, uh, um, a zip type lock bag uh, because you can't really get all the air out. Um, this actually is superior and it makes it smaller and it's totally watertight. The kit is meant to be combined with a tourniquet, uh, something like the cat tourniquet or the rats, which you see right here. I definitely like the rats better because it's smaller. We just went to Walmart and purchased the least expensive uh, triple antibiotic. This was 88 cents for a tube, uh, butterfly closures, a five pack of gauze. Um, we got some bandage rolls, some band-aids, um, and some abdominal uh, surgical dressings or extra large surgical dressings, uh, vinyl gloves, and pretty much it. So we'll look at how to assemble the kit and how much to put into it. Okay, so we have final exam gloves, surgical dressings, heavy duty fabric bandages, gauze pads, such, uh, rolled gauze is an option uh, here, as well as a cotton banded roll. Uh, they're very similar. Um, these are uh, cheaper and uh, easier to, uh, uh, to get in bulk. Butterfly closures, antibiotic ointment, and more bandage roll. So what we're gonna try and do is get one, two, three, four vinyl gloves. I recommend large or extra large because you can get a smaller hand into this, but if you send out small gloves, somebody with my hands, they're not gonna be able to get their hands into it. These are the large or extra large surgical dressings. We want two of those. We want to have butterfly closures, four of these. Band-aids are important, so six of those and three large gauze pads. We're gonna combine it with this. There's no reason to have the packaging on this. And it is kind of already open, so you might be able to get some of the air out of this before you put it in. Um, we're gonna combine all this into the package. We're also gonna try and get one of these, a self-adhering uh, bandage in and see, how, see if that makes it.
doesn't matter what brand you get, you gotta get them in. Squash it all down. smash this flat as low as possible and we should be able to get this to seal now. One kit done. So if you look, this is how big the finished product is and it can easily fit into a pocket. Let's see if we can get a hundred of these made for uh, each family uh, or a group of people who want to take on this project and let's save some lives. Slava Ukraini.